Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Monday evening to you all. I hope everyone is doing well out there tonight and had yourselves an awesome Monday and certainly hope you folks have been having a great start to your week so far. Here to give you some update information about what we've been talking about over the last several videos and that is a lot of energy that's going to start to make its way into the western U.S. Lower elevation rain, higher elevation snow and you know I'm not just talking about the Pacific Northwest. I really think areas of the Southwest is going to get just as much moisture as areas of the Pacific Northwest. So we're going to give you some update information on that, but one of the, the big topics in this video and what a lot of people are probably tuning in to uh, hear about is a larger system is going to branch off from all that energy out west and uh, affect the southeastern U.S. eventually as we get into a late this coming weekend, early next week. And is there going to be enough cold air to bring some winter weather to mash with all this energy that could potentially be on the table, this larger storm system. How much of a cold air feed are we going to get into this? There's been some changes over the last, I would say, 24 to 36 hours that does not favor uh, winter weather fans at all, which is including me. But it's important to really tune in, even on the, you know, the, the not so great trends, to really understand what's driving these pieces so you can understand why it could just as quickly trend back more favor favorably. So we're going to nerd out with you folks. We're going to show you, you know, just the model guidance with this and then stay tuned for the very end. I'm going to talk about why I continue just to continue think that the second half of February, basically the back half of winter is going to end with a bang. OK, so going to give you my opinions on that. And uh, yeah, we'll make our way through this video. If you folks have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. And if you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over, you guys know the deal. Please put them in the comments below so I can pray over it and so others can do so too. Prayer is powerful. It's a way to glorify God and uh, it's a way to look out for one another. So definitely put it in the comments. Let's get rocking and rolling. So it's pretty quiet out there across the lower 48. We got some moisture just affecting extreme western and northwestern sections of Washington. Well, that's about it. We got this clipper sur surging through. Uh, I mean, it looks like it's raining based off this radar in the UP of Michigan. You guys have to let me know what you're seeing. But this will continue to kind of dive down into the eastern Great Lakes region and, uh, you know, could potentially bring a little snow overnight for eastern lower Michigan. And uh, eventually we'll dive some energy all the way down here into the mid-Atlantic and the southeastern U.S. And I do think some higher elevations in the Appalachian Mountains could see a little bit of snow from this. Not a big deal at all. A little bit of snow shower, rain shower activity out on, uh, in southeast Mass and southern New England. We kind of expected that. But outside of that, folks, it's pretty quiet. All right. Watch as warnings and advisories. I want to show you this just because you can already tell out west you're starting to already get flood watches. You're starting to already get winter storm watches up for California. High wind watches are already up. So not only a lot of moisture is coming into the western U.S., we're going to have a lot of wind action. So a lot of strong winds. So we'll talk more on that as we get a little bit closer. The rest of the country is pretty quiet. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to do this a little bit different. We're going to start off by just showing you model guidance and then and then we'll kind of nerd out on you guys and and really try to explain to you folks why the changes are, are occurring and why it could change back and what's driving the cold air source. It's a little bit more cut, cut and dry, if you will, out in the western U.S. We're going to get storms regardless, okay? Um, but in the eastern U.S., southeastern U.S., mid-Atlantic, it's definitely a lot more complex. So let's start off tomorrow evening. Pretty quiet. We got this clipper that's diving down here into the eastern U.S., no real cold air with this. It's cold enough um, for the higher elevations of the Southern Alps. You can see a little bit of blue in the mountains of Virginia, West Virginia, higher elevations in North Carolina and Tennessee. It's just a chilly rain midweek for the Carolinas, North Georgia sweeping in. At the same time, this kind of heads out, you know, becomes a stronger system, but it's too little too late. It's heading on out into the Atlantic Ocean. And then we're getting into Wednesday evening. And then this is when the energy is already moving in Wednesday, starting to move into all the western states, California, Oregon, and Washington. This begins to move in. takes a while for the snow levels to really drop, but you know this could be one of the one of the more significant winter storms for the Sierra Nevada that begins to move in. Still not a super cold storm by any means. I mean, by any means at all. But the higher elevations will start to get a lot of uh, snow from this lower elevation. Look at all this rain moving into California, taking over. We're starting to get into Friday morning. Uh, this moisture begins to overspread across the Rockies. Um, you're just getting rounds of rain into the western U.S., the Pacific coastline. Starting to get into, let's just take it all the way to about Saturday morning, February 3rd. Still quiet in the east. 
and then look at all this moisture overspread in the middle of the country. There is a, a what we call omega block, this ridge, this tall ridge that's abruptly going all the way north and then getting squeezed by the trough on the west and east side of this. So everything in this region right here, I mean, even all the way up to Canada, folks, it's too warm for any kind of winter weather, which is wild for February 3rd standards. But here we are. But could be just enough cold air in the front range, maybe some snow. we got to watch out for the winter storm threat around like Denver, areas of Wyoming, for sure. But you keep this going, all right, we could, we could just still get a lot of energy. You know, cold air starts to work in. Uh, could, could you end up getting a winter storm across the northern Rockies? It's very possible. And then we continue. We're getting into Sunday morning. All right, where's our cold air? We'll talk more about that here in a second. Let's just show you how this run kind of ends up, you know, going. All right, we're getting into Sunday evening. There's the moisture. It's already much further north, right? Here it comes. Where's the cold air? It looks like still just rain. At the same time, another powerful storm system. This looks very strong. Begins to impact about a week from today, California. We won't speak on much details on that just because we don't know them. It's kind of far out. But this could be a bigger system. This is like a bona fide, like, upper level low at this point. There's no attachment to the northern stream. It's just doing its own thing, and it's being bogged down by this ridge on top. And this is just kind of turning around. And, you know, you got to, at this point, like, next, like, literally a week from right now, you got a 993 low, upper low, off the coast of the southeast, off the coast of the Carolinas, pretty much. Cold air is trying to dive down, and it's just too late. And then it heads on out. What about the GFS? Same thing. There's your clipper right here. And hang tight with me, folks, because if you're viewing and you're saying, oh, well, we're done, um, it's important to really understand what's driving this. Um, you know, it, and I know some people's like, Mitch, I don't have time to, to, to know what's driving it. I just want to know if it's going to snow at my house or not. But it's very, very important, in my opinion, because, <laughs> you know, some people would just look at their weather app and see a snowflake, you know, six, seven days out, and that's all they need to know. But there's so much more to go to. Chances are, if you're tuning in, you have somewhat of an interest in weather. You know, just just even if it's just a very small interest. So that would lead me to believe that maybe part of you do does want to kind of understand what really drives this. But we get into the eastern U.S., there's that clipper kind of delivering just a chilly rain across the southeast. I just don't see no chances of that working out. All right, we keep this going. You're seeing lower pressure over the northeast in Atlantic Canada. You can see cold air dropping down. There's the ridge building. Here comes our big system out west to bring in lower elevation rain, higher elevation snow. We have to watch to see if some sort of amplification of a low gets going here. Could deliver a big storm system across the high plains. Like I said, watch Denver. I've mentioned them a couple times with this. We keep this going. This is the latest GFS. Let's make sure we got the latest information here. Latest GFS. Yeah, we're good. We're good. All right, we're getting into Sunday morning. Here comes the precipitation. Where's the cold air? It's way up here. All right, it's trending. You remember when we were looking at previous videos, this 540 line was all the way down here. It's way up here now. We'll talk about why. We'll talk about why here in a second. But this moves in. It's much further inland, much more what we call amped up just bringing a lot of precipitation in. and folks i mean it's all rain all the way up into west virginia you're thinking man where where did all that cold air go that was showing up well you got two things going on here you almost got like a low right here and then another upper low right over here arkansas and you keep this going some cold air begins to work in it's a combination between two things going on uh you're getting a little bit more cold air diving in from the northeast and then this system is creating its own cold air if you will and it's enough of its cold air, because that's what upper level lows do. It kind of pulls down its own cold air sometimes. And then you look, and let's go on to get a little bit closer. Let's just go on and dive down to the southeast. Look at the GFS is doing. It's delivering a paste bomb in areas of western North Carolina and the mountains of North Carolina, even into Virginia. If this was to move a little bit further north, it would be the higher chances you would see more blue on the map. But this continues, and, and as this system kind of pulls away, a little bit of cold air gets more involved. You know, latest GFS tries to switch it to snow all the way to Charlotte. But, man, the cold air is a huge issue with this now. When 24, 36 hours ago, you were almost seeing too much cold air. It's wild how things switch. It really is. So, but here we are. There's no attachment to the northern stream with this. So, let's, um, 
let's look at impacts for this. Out west, we know we're going to get a lot of moisture. I mean, look, this is between now and the next 10 days from the European Ensemble going for four to five inches of rain in San Diego. That's a lot of rain for San Diego. And then just look at all the moisture across California. You look at snow, it's going to be adding up over the next 10 days. I mean, you're going to get a lot of snow in the Sierra Nevada. Not as much in the Cascades up here, because I think the heaviest moisture will kind of go down here into the Central Rockies. But, you know, a lot of areas are going to have a chance. You got a pretty high snow average showing up here in Denver, you know, you know, five to six inch average here. So um, we proceed to move and, and I'm not trying to skip my folks in the middle of the country, but, you know, I don't think there's any kind of threat of winter weather for the middle of the country unless you live up against the front range, maybe the high plains. And then we go on and just move into the southeastern U.S. This is the snow signal for the European ensemble from uh, this afternoon, the latest one. And there's your signal. And I know you're seeing, oh, man, there's a half an inch in Columbia. Um, are we going to get a half an inch of snow? That's not how it works. But the European ensemble, this is 50 different runs combined together. And unfortunately, I don't think we can see the panels on this. Um, well, yeah, you can. I think so. Let's not get... Yeah, I mean, if you look at this, if you look at the panels right here, all right, and I know it's going to be very hard to see on the screen. Um, there's going to be a couple members, like there's one right there, 23, that has a major winter storm over the eastern Carolinas. You would call that an outlier, right? It skews the mean a little bit. And uh, I would call 15 down here an outlier too. Just looks kind of goofy compared to all the other ones. And you almost can call six an outlier. All right, and then you look at the other 25 members here, 39 is an outlier. For sure. I wish it wasn't because it would deliver a massive winter storm over my backyard. But it would be an outlier. But you see all these smaller members right in here? Very small. So those kind of outliers are definitely skewing the mean. And uh, kind of that's probably why you have like a half inch mean over uh, like Columbia, for example. You know, so you got to remember that. You can't just look at that and say, oh, man, a half an inch of snow. I would take a half an inch of snow in Columbia. That just tells you how much I love snow, folks. A half an inch of snow is pathetic. <laughs> but I really think, as of now, Western North Carolina is favored. Could even watch the upstate of South Carolina. This, is, this could change, and I'm going to talk about why here in a second. Same one thing with the GFS ensemble. There it is, precipitation out west. A lot of it showing in California. What about the snow? There it is. Rocky is going to get hit hard, and the Sierra Nevada is going to get hit very hard with a lot of snow. What about the signal off the GFS Ensemble? Now, some of this is going to combine with a little clipper event that comes through over the next 24 or 48 hours. Uh, but there's the signal building in. <clears throat> and uh, let's see. We're going to have to update this. All right, here we go. There's the signal building in. And I mean, holy smokes, I wasn't expecting that. Wow. Um, yeah, I'll be honest. This is the first time looking at it. And that is much, much more significant than um, the last several ones. So, hey, uh, this tells you that sometimes I don't always prepare for this. So we're actually going <laughs> to, yeah, I'm a little shocked, honestly. So this is the latest GFS Ensemble. As you can tell, it is much more beefed up compared to the 12Z. You can see the, the obvious difference there. And then the 06Z, much different. And all of a sudden you got this, which is suddenly showing a two-inch, uh, mean in uh, Columbia. Um, I'm not still not buying this, folks, um, and, and I'll talk about why. I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer, but that is interesting. So, in fact, we're going to look at the individual panels here on the fly. I, I did not actually plan on doing this, but this has got me highly interested on what's causing such a huge hit over the upstate of South Carolina, the Piedmont. So, uh, give me a minute here. Panels, doing this on the fly. Um, snow totals right here. So, I mean, there is a there is a, some big hits. There's a big hit in eastern North Carolina, um, but no hit, no hit, no hit. Big hit, 21, right here. Remember 21, that, that's a big one. No hit, no hit, big hit here, big hit there. Man, yeah. Um, no hit, no hit, well, oh, that's a hit, that's a hit. No hit, no hit, no hit, no hit, no hit. No hit. Well, I'm, I'm saying no hit, but I mean, areas of like the mountains are getting hit. 
So I don't, it's not like I'm trying to ignore you folks in the mountains. I think you sit, sit decent with this. But, man, there is some pretty large hits outside the mountains on the latest GF Ensemble. This is new to me. This is new to me, folks. New to me. But I've actually never been caught off guard like this in the middle of a video. Um, but holy smokes, that is, um, yeah. So we'll have to watch this overnight. Um, I'm sure there's uh, people chattering like crazy on social media about this right now because it's been a terrible day of trends for winter weather fans, and that might get everybody juiced up again. But please, t you know, temper down your excitement. But th this is this that that is weird. All right, let's just keep rolling. I'm getting all distracted. Let's talk about what's driving this. All right, and um, we're looking at this on tropical tidbits, and, and really, what's been the bad trends today except what we just saw. Um, is, um, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you kind of what's been driving those bad trends. Sorry. I'm just a little discombobulated, but what, what I just saw, <laughs> that's kind of wild there. Um, but this is what's going on. All right. There goes our clipper system heads on off. You see the, you see the blues on your screen. That's lower pressure. All right. Let's get back on track. Blues on the screen, lower pressure indicates storminess, cooler than average temperatures. The reds on your screen that indicates ridging above average temperatures. Um, and just a, a, a bulge in the jet stream further north. So what you got going on here, I'm going to draw on this a couple times. There's your trough digging, storminess. There's your ridge. It spikes all the way up into Canada and then kind of dives down to here. You got troughing down to here. All right, high pressure, low pressure, low pressure. All right, let's get this back off the screen keep this rolling. All right, so what happens here? is you get a little bit of energy right in here, a little dip in the trough that it reattaches to this. This becomes a low right here. We call it a 50-50 low because of the placement of where it is as far as uh, longitude and latitude in the northern hemisphere. And it's right here, you know, give or, give or take, you know, a couple positions. So one thing you'll notice down here is you're getting lower pressure showing up down here. So you know the ball game's getting going. We're getting a lot of storm systems in the western U.S. You see the bluer colors. This indicates what we just show, showed you guys on the models. Lower pressure, right? Storming us out here. So what you got going on here, and let's go on just a little bit further. As you see how it gets a little bit more bluer right here, um, this is our storm system sort of detaching from the main storminess out west. So we got this ridge that's very oddly just positioned, but it's here. Um, all right, then we got this low moving across, and I'm about to get it into motion for you. This is moving through. Is it going to move like this? I doubt it, but we'll have to watch. All right, so low right here, moving through, storminess. All right, a low right here, high right here. Okay, so low pressure coming in in the form of moisture. All right, low pressure right here, just kind of sitting tight, delivering a little bit of energy. It's kind of anchored in spot in, in one spot because of this high pressure. The flow around this low is going to go like this. Okay, flow around this high is going to go like this, the op kind of the opposite direction, right? So this is going to help sort of try to yank down. Well, it's going to, if I was to keep this going, it would be positioned a little bit different. This is going to try to yank down cold air into whatever moisture this low brings. Uh, so them them kind of working together at the same current is bringing down cold air from the northern portion of the, the world. All right. So we call this is what brings us sort of our our cold air damming setups and just a feed of cold air from the northeast, which seems to be the only way we can get winter weather these days <laughs> east of the Appalachian Mountains. Um, but you kind of get this off your screen and keep this going. And uh, there's our cold air source trying to feed down into this. So we'll stop it right here. This 50-50 low is what we call it. This is trying to yank down cold air. We need this a little bit closer than what this is showing. This is our big storm system indicating in the lower heights, the, the bluer colors down here. So I'm going to back this up a couple runs. Okay. I'm going to back it up to right here. So this is what it was a couple days ago. Well, this was... This was actually yesterday about midday, so let's back it up to about right here. All right, this was I think this was a really good run. So you notice it's right in here. I, what I want you to watch for is watch the changes in this area right into here. Not so much down here, but right up here. All right, we're going to go all the way to the present run. 
you kind of see what's going on there it's hard to tell all right watch how this bluer area right here ticks eastward watch how it goes kind of eastward all right so what's happening here is we're losing any sort of phasing together we, we kind of would need phasing to really jolt this system with cold air and instead this is becoming one detached from one another making this just a full-fledged kind of upper level low and our cold air source is ticking to the east it's ticking away and i want you to watch how this red blob right here also ticks to the east you know it kind of bulges a little bit to the east it barely can tell so that's what's going on with this you know and you can see it well when you're looking at the temperatures about a mile above our heads and this is in celsius but think about you see this red line right here it's probably really hard to see and then everything on this side that's the cold air that's the 32 degree line in celsius um so zero degrees celsius but th think of this as the 32 degree line about a mile above our heads which is very important when you're dealing with marginal setups so i'm going to back this up a few runs okay you know, this was once upon a time, which was literally yesterday morning when we were dealing with absolutely no cold air issue. And I want you to watch. I want to. I want you to watch kind of the runs, all basically the runs going all the way up to the present run that we're in right now. Watch how this 32 degree line aloft for like Sunday afternoon retreats all the way to the northeast. See that that is a trend you don't want to see for winter weather. Okay, look how it just kind of goes up. Now, you know. You look at energy, and, and here and here's the pieces on our puzzle right here. See, there's our big upper low right here. There's no attachment to, to our 50-50 low, which is right here. You can see energy sort of pivoting, pinwheeling down this low. If we could get some attachment here, that would mean that our 50-50 low would be a little closer to this. No attachment. This is just kind of a lone wolf out here, an upper low just kind of doing its thing, trying to trying to trying to pump out a miracle. All right, so. I hope that makes sense, guys. It does. I really do. Um, you know, at the, at the end of the day, what's happening to kind of sum all that up, if I, you know, blew some people's minds there, our cold air source is ticking too far east. So our cold air source is is retreating to the northeast. So we, we need to come back if you're a winter weather fan. That's ultimately what, what we need. Uh, it changes the entire dynamics and makeup of this system if it trends away because then we have to rely on some sort of weak high pressure and that's just not going to work for most people but there is a wild card in this a wild card is hey you know this just becomes an upper level low and it creates its own cold air but it's very marginal this would be the makings of a what we call a wet snow paste bomb where it just pukes snow in like the low 30s it can happen. It has happened. I think 2004, late February is a great example of that for the Carolinas, where like Rock Hill, South Carolina got like two feet of snow. And then like three days later, it was in the 70s. So, you know, weird things happen. Now, if this system does not work out, okay, and, you know, it, who knows? There's a good chance for most people that it won't, I don't think, you know, but that could change. We look beyond this, all right? This is when we're going to talk about the extended. So we're going to look at the European Ensemble. Here goes our system sometime next weekend, well, this coming weekend into early next week. This moves on out. I think we enter a warm-up sometime early February, even getting into mid-February. What I want you to watch is this big storm system, 10 days out, entering the uh, western U.S. There it is, indicating in the bluer colors, lower pressure, storminess. I think we're going to have a period of warmer temperatures in early February. I mean, getting all the way into second week of February. There's the ridge showing up over the eastern U.S., but what I want you to watch is the progression of this blue. And then I want you to watch as this ridge begins to spike up to Alaska. And we can only go out 360 hours out. But as we're getting into that middle portion of February, I know that's getting late in the game. I get it. The sun angle is higher. The days are getting longer. And people don't really prefer snow in probably late February or March. Um, I don't like snow in March, but I'll take it in early March. I don't, um, I'll take snow any time of the year, but you know, I prefer it in like December and January also in, fe in early February. But I think, I think winter's just going to go ham the second half of February, even into early March. Uh, but there it is. The, the last frame here, getting all the way to the morning of the 13th, this is following the exact pattern that we're seeing in the extended. The progression of a trough into the east, ridge in the west, ridge all the way up into Alaska. 
and even and even a negative NAO showing up in Greenland. And it's the same thing with the progression of uh, the GFS ensemble, folks. And you know maybe maybe we're in range of I don't know how far this is going to go out because I don't know if it's finished running. But same thing, there it is, signal. And, and yeah, we're going to have to jump back to the 12Z here. But big signal for storminess out west. And there's the ridge still over, you know, the 10th, 11th time frame. And then if you go all the way to the very end, there it is. There's that trough beginning to show up over the eastern U.S., central U.S., tall ridge up to Alaska. And this is the beginning stages of something, a significant, very favorable pattern change. You you connect the end of the European ensemble with the beginning of the, the European extended and it progresses the exact same way. It goes on to go about to about mid-month to a massive signal of a tall spiking ridge over the western U.S. all the way up to Alaska. We call that a positive PNA, negative EPO, and a big trough dumping out east. And um, this indicates storminess, cold air, and what I think is going to be a rocking and rolling second half of February. That's just my opinion. And then this continues, folks. It continues through the end of February. It continues through early March. And, um, yeah, I, I do not think we're going to have an early start in spring. I just don't. And you look at temperatures compared to average with this. Watch how it cools down the last couple weeks of February and just stays like that through March. So that's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. I'll have to take a take a peek at those um, panels again because, um, yeah, that was pretty wild. Stay tuned, folks. Things could change. I know most of that video was a bummer, except the unexpected GFS ensemble panel there. Um, but things could change fast, folks. And, you know, I've always said that early February, I've said it on my social media platforms, I've, I've said on here, I really think early February is a bonus period. I really do. So stay tuned. That's all I got. Have a great night. I'll talk to you again in the morning.